And today is Wednesday, Ketsi Ekobank, the Pan-African Bank. We bring you AM Business. Today we are telling the story of Araba Kwegrin, who is bouncing back after losing her job and livelihood to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now she can boast of a fledgling footwear business. Joy Business's James Ishen reports. <laughs> COVID-19 came in with lots of surprises, the good and the bad. Let me tell you the story of Araba, a lady who is into shoemaking, a self-taught one for that matter. She started this when she was laid off due to COVID-19. I am sure by the end of today, I should be learning how to make shoes. I mean, professional one for that matter. Let's engage it. Hi, Araba. Yes. How are you doing? I'm good. Tell me, what's happening here? <laughs> I'm making a slippers and I think this, oh, I'm almost through with it so I need to get a fixed wall and that's what I'm doing. I'm sticking it on well so it doesn't um, remove or something. Yeah. Mm. I am sure you tell me more about your journey and how <laughs> it all started and what the process you go through before you sure. get to this point. Sure. This is Majestic. Araba Green, as she is affectionately called, was unemployed for years after completing university in 2013. She later acquired a job in a chocolate company as a supervisor. After months of working with the chocolate company, the workers were laid off due to the emergence of COVID-19. At this point, she was stranded in life, but had different options and decided to learn the making of shoes, sandals and slippers. Araba had no teacher, but embarked on a self-taught mission. It took her just a month and some weeks to learn the making of footwear. This is majestic. COVID, there are a lot of shortage in, I would say, in productivity and all that. So companies have to lay people off and all that. So I think unfortunately, I was among that. Mm. When I was at home doing nothing, I tried getting other jobs because I tried going for interviews and all that. But unfortunately, I couldn't get my hand on anything. I didn't have any formal training. I had no clue about shoemaking. In fact, it was a miracle for me, if I should say. Mm. It was virtually a miracle. Then, I went to the market one time and I got the thread that was used for the slippers. I came home, I was just turning my hands on it because I didn't, I didn't even know what I was doing because I was just angry inside that I, I really wanted to do something and I'm not getting so I was just angry inside and I was just turning my hands around the thread. registered the name Kwebaba Collections. So I then opened social media accounts. That was Facebook, Instagram, and recently YouTube accounts as well. And people think I've just put the videos together, but I, I'm not the one who did it. So I got someone, a customer wanted to see me do the slippers instantly. So she came, I started, and I was done with it. Then she believed that I did it. The making of footwear seemed to be very tedious for Araba, but she's never discouraged. She believes she can make a big deal out of this and gradually teach others. Actually, uh, at the point buying my stuff, and it's only 90% of males that you see. So one guy walked up to me, hey, so they say I the money here by the change you man and so I then corner cup of his bit now. In fact, I felt so 
down and I thought like ah, am I really doing this am I really doing the right thing and all that so I think but afterwards I then just gathered the courage and I said okay that's what I want to do and I wouldn't just take anything from anyone. Araba is not ready to go back to any white collar job but to expand her shoemaking business. Yes. No I wouldn't I wouldn't bother myself because this Sometimes I wake up as early at 4 a.m. because it's mine. And the nice thing, the nicest thing about it is, you don't. Even though I need a showroom to exhibit it, I still don't need a showroom when I have to start doing it. I can just be in my room and I'll start working on it. The following in the morning, I bring it out, then I stick on the machine, and you are good to go. I can work at even 12 am and still get my things delivered so if i'm working in a government or in a white collar job okay then the the more the eight to five itinerary uh, the pressure is <laughs> is too much mm -hmm. i work at my pace but it is with discipline okay. and i also don't want to lose this because this has now become a passion how many sandals, slippers are you able to produce within a week or within a month? I will take it for a day. Okay. A day, if I'm challenged, I can do 10. Okay. 10 in a day. So if I have um, more orders, I think in a week I can do about 70 or at least, let's say, 60 in a week. Yeah. Uh, how much? Run me through your prizes for the slippers and the sandals and if you have any particular names for it and what goes into the into the pricing of this particular slippers or sandals okay um the prices ranges from 90 to um 150 90 for the beaded the woven that's for female and 150 for the leather sandals for men respectively and it's, it's nothing much actually goes into it. It's virtually creating good designs for people to get hold on. When people love it, you can then be on it for quite some time. Then probably you do other steps. Most of her designs are named after loved ones who supported her during the COVID-19 period. These were basically loved ones and mainly females. So um, this design is actually called Eduma. It was a design I created for my sister. Yes, this is also a design I created for a friend. So every design has its name. I have some name, some designs that I named after myself, my mom, my friends, my siblings, and all that. She takes me through the process of making her footwears. Where am I protective? Am I just to safeguard myself?
we are done with the grinding yes, process. Yes, and I'll come back again. I don't need all of this here. Okay. Then what next? Okay. I'll need my hammer. I need my hammer. I virtually need all my tools. So what do you use the hammer for? Okay. I need to create a hole where I can use the to pass through to get to the under of it. Okay. Yes. So there's my punch. This is also needed here. The back is for the knife. This and when I turn it, stick. it's for fixing the slippers. Yeah. There's the punch. Yes. And please. the hammer. Yes, please. Lighter. Yes. Please. Why lighter? <laughs> <laughs> because whenever lighter comes in, when there's one factor that, that comes into our head. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lighter will come in because I need to bend the thread for mm -hmm. um, to make it uniform. For it to be uniform. Okay. Yeah. And you're using your bare hands. Your finger. Yeah, so. <laughs> it's not hurting you. No, because I think th that was how I started, so I'm more comfortable doing it that way. Yes. Yeah. To make sure I get my size right. That's the parts that I was bent. Well, so I earlier told you I was going to learn how to make shoe. In fact, a professional one for that matter. This is Shoemaking 101. But speaking to Araba, she's actually made us understand about how she started and how the journey is going for her. For Joy Business, James Ishen. And that is our joy business uh, story for today. You're watching the AM show. Benjamin Akako will join me shortly uh, because we would like to hear what you have to say on the back of that conversation we had with uh, Mr. Benny, who's Director of Legal Affairs at the FDA. We are asking you what your concerns are uh, with regards to food products and drugs on our markets. And what you do when you go to the market to buy an item, what do you look out for? And uh, we'll be taking all those comments uh, when we come back right after this.